International, a small night podcast hosted by Lord Hood, Lazarus Clay, and Lagrius. Episode 79, recorded on May 18th, 2014. I'm Ladison Sclay, and welcome to The Arsenal, a podcast where we talk about Spiral Knights. I am joined today by the absence of Lord Hood and Zangrius, uh, both MIA, I have no idea where they are, and joined in their stead by Sky Scythe. Hello. And Tofok. hey Yeah. Uh, both of these guys, you have heard them before, for sure, if you've been around this podcast. Sky was on just a couple episodes ago on... 77, I guess. For all you old-timers, yes. I'm back. It's been too long. It's been too long. Tovok. We, 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 we talked to Sky Scythe two weeks ago, but let's pontificate on Tovok for just a little bit, make him feel special. Yeah, yeah. This was the man behind Canis Maximus on episode 50 mm-hmm. of the Arsenal podcast. Yep. I was it, the voice of Canis Maximus. In fun. fact, you were on 25 for our April Fools. Yep. We did a whole like, thing with AID, but I don't quite remember who all participated. It was Kelnox, Tavakia, and you, I think. Okay. And AGA side. Uh, Kelnox. I think he did. Missed that kid. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's coming back. That's good. Yeah. He was just messaging me. He was like, I think I'm going to pick this game back up. Like, sweet deal. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Mm-hmm. Both of these yeah. guys are going to be joining us for uh, Spiral Lights on June 6th and 7th when we have the main event and be playing games and doing fun stuff together. So, it's going to be exciting. Look forward to that. You don't Mark your calendars. And if you are going to miss it, be subscribed to our YouTube so that you see the videos on demand because it's going to be <laughs> exciting. And if you don't even do that, I'm going to go all evil primal on you. Oh, see yeah. And Watch you out. guys know how evil Sky Scythe is. Bad to the bone, that guy. All right, well, Tovok, we got one quick question for you. We don't want to like grill you as we would yeah. do a normal guest with questions and such, because you've already been around. And if people want to look um, Tovok up, Arsenal Podcast Tovok. I don't know what episode were you on. Oh shoot, I don't even remember. I think I jumped in on one, and there was one where it was planned, but it was really early. I think it was like in the episode 20- sixteen. Tovok is potatoes. Sixteen. There you go. That was the episode. And I guess you joined us again on 31. (laughs) What? Um, Talking about the Callahan and Iron Slug and other things. Uh, That was the one I just jumped in because I didn't have any uh, anything big to say on either of those things. Ah, we had fun at 16. We made the little mini meme of potatoes. Potato! (laughs) Yeah. That lasted for for a while. For any of you that don't know... I'm of um, Adventures Delicious fame. I'm I'm kind of keeping the blog afloat right now. Um, Agazide or Agaz- Agazide, he um, he had college and stuff to take care of, so he's been pretty absent. And aside from myself, Shen, and occasionally Anger, uh, there's kind of like mixed postings in there. And uh, my primary job there was to do graphic design. And, but now uh, he does everything. Yeah. Uh, I used to upgrade the queue. Then we got Tev, so I stopped doing it because she upgraded the queue. And then Tev left, so I picked that up again because I got bored, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I I tried to get back into Spiral Knights maybe like six months ago. And I was playing it, and I tried to revive my guild. And then lo and behold, everybody left. <laughs> they always do. They always leave me. Um... <laughs> And I ended up grinding a lot of um, Vanna, essentially, by myself. And I was like, eh, this isn't really doing it for me anymore. So that's where I've been. That's what I do. And now I'm trying to make a comeback, slowly but surely. feels like everyone has that time in their Spiral Knights life where it's, you know what? I am resigned to this game. Vanna Duke, come here. I'm going to beat your skull in 500 times. Give me crowns. And I don't even want to. Yeah, because it's, it's the most lucrative way to get crowns and more money, less problems, right? But at the same time, it's it's so boring. It's not super <laughs> engaging. American thanks. <clears throat> thanks Anyways. In 2013, I knew a guy who daily did Vanaduke ten times. That's uh, disgusting. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's honestly yeah, dis- Moving on. 
Okay. Tovok, we have a very important question for you. What's the question? Volcanic pepper box, cautery sword, or heavy deconstructor? Or iron buckler. <laughs> pepper box is such a piece of poo. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Not really. Cautery sword is good against slimes, right? Yeah, but uh, three star. But I really like the idea of the cautery sword. Like, it's like kind of like a medic's blade. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the cautery sword. Good deal. Though I guess that's the wrench one. Is the medic's blade? Cautery sword's wrench. just like a oh pink yeah, accented like the, brandish. The Gremel like medic thing. So just that pick one. wrench wand. Be deviant. No, no, no. Cautery sword. Cautery sword. Alrighty. Good deal. Well, we have a lockbox here, so I'll go ahead and open this up, see what we're doing this show. Squeaky? Ooh, what is it? Inside. I don't do a good squeaky. We need Zang for that. Anyways, we have a discussion on feedback and how to give it. And at this point, if I had the ability, I'd like my, let this mic go on feedback and get a good like screeching high sound that no one likes. Yeah. <laughs> Hold the microphone up to the speakers talking. and feedback. There you go. But that would be mean. <laughs> we have a little bit on Uber Mecha Death Machines. Disclaimer: not actually in the game, but Uber Mecha Death Machines. And then lastly, the rare snipe badge. That's the trading card, right? Yeah. Yeah. Possibly one of the only ones that exists right now, if not the only one. I don't know. Is there only one guy that has it? I do, I've not seen more than... I know foils are up there, but they're so dang expensive. Oh, yeah. It's there like $40 a foil. On Spiral Snipes, and the dude was like, best $50 I ever spent. And I'm like, no. <laughs> it What's... wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll go into a little bit more detail on that and explain what that is in case you aren't following up on the, uh, the Steam activities. Let's jump into Mission Report, get this show started. <laughs> Let's try this again. So basically... No, actually. The excavators told the truth. It was me who lied. Mission Report! So that bumper for Mission Report was actually made by HRPB. I guess we'll use the uh, HRPB version this week. That was fun. Thanks, HRPB. You're like fun. That bumper. He is. He's the Maple <laughs> Vodka Man. Yeah. Anyways, this is where... Person. It's where we talk about our gaming experiences since the last podcast. Tovok, you're going to talk about yours Can since we talk your about last not podcast. Nights? What have you been doing that's not Spiral Knights? But I'm going to talk about Spiral Knights too, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, I've been, I, um, oh, jeez, collect my thoughts. I got Guild Wars. I've been playing a lot of Guild Wars. Uh, I got a lot of buddies that play Guild Wars. Uh, I got Mass Effect. I got back, I got back into Mass Effect 3. I've been playing a lot of the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer to the extent that I started watching my score and feeling inferior, but that's whatever. <laughs> the other day I got back into Guns of Icarus because a lot of people on YouTube are getting back into Guns of Icarus. Steer and... higher! <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that. Spam um... the steer higher voice command. <laughs> it's excellent. You just have a, a ship just flying by. Steer higher! Steer higher! Like everyone on the ship. It's I didn't great. even know they had... <laughs> Voice commands on that, but I, but I have more. I have more. I have more. Um, Age of Mythology. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, the extended edition just came out, so I got it. You know, reliving my childhood through nostalgia and whatnot. And uh, I brought that up. I've been playing a lot of that. I'm I, I'm trying to get good. Dark Souls Two came out. Playing a lot of Dark Souls Two. And then the other day, somebody messaged me about Spiral Snipe, uh, Spiral Knights, and he was like. Yo, Tovok, you're the guy from AID, right? And I'm just like, oh no, here it comes. He's going to ask me for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, do you want to help me run this mission? And I'm like, what is it? And he's like, it's an arena. And I'm like, oh, I'm so in for an arena right now. So the other week I actually did play Pick Up Spiral Nights again and I really enjoyed it. So Nice. That's what I've been up to. It's a great story. Yeah. Now what did you really do? I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, speaking about those voice commands, you could do like an MP3 thing in uh, Age of Mythology. So I've been spamming the Wololio. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, but go on. Well, That's Sky it for me. Sky Scythe and I played Lockdown for like two hours. Was that Friday? 
Uh, I think it was yesterday. What day was it? Was, was it yesterday? Maybe. It was not yesterday. Oh. My brother's birthday was yesterday. It was Friday. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, man. It was kind of interesting. to Madison's brother. Yay. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't know. He listens to the podcast occasionally, but we'll see. Hmm. So that was fun. We just ended up trying to pull off something having to do with me freezing an opponent and then him, Iron Slug, or Callahan charge shotting the frozen opponent. Um, it was a dream that we were trying to shoot for. Ended up not being very successful because we got in a group with uh, a bunch of people that were all freeze resistant and we're like, eh, uh, too lazy to switch booty. groups. Too strong. Skulvers. Um, among other things, yes, the booty yeah. is too strong. The bacon cooks itself. Um, what else was there? Pigs and bacon. <laughs> um, and other various phrases that you will also get to know because I'm putting up a video probably going to go out either very late tonight or tomorrow. Go be subscribed to youtube.com slash Sklay Elite. Okay, um, so it's okay that I don't get the reference. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do not worry no, that you do not get any that. of these references. Just know the booty's I'm... too strong. <laughs> the booty is too strong! And, you know what? The video's coming out. It should be fun. Um, It's gonna just be... I'm gonna put it out as one part. I considered making it a two-parter, and it would kind of make sense, but it just goes together so much that I think you guys just get a 30 minute lockdown video so that's what happens but so I was actually thinking fun. could we just put up the raw uncut Lockdown's two fun. hour footage as well as the edited version yes we could absolutely do that <clears throat> oh, I, just had an idea uh, I guess that would be a good idea huh yeah I can oh. go ahead and do that that's fine yeah good Sweet. plan I will leave that one to export. So I'll try to get out the edited version tonight and Sunday night, uh, May 18th, and then you get the unedited version May 19th on Monday, along with the podcast episode. Sounds good. Double thumbs up. I have also been playing League and perfecting my Draven, and uh, I've Draven. been playing <laughs> and I've been playing Hearthstone. But this is not a this is a derailing podcast. But that's not what we're about. Sky, did you do anything else this week? Outside of play Lockdown with little old me? Uh, uh, nothing particular that I don't do on any other occasion. Yes, I did do that. And then I went ahead and made a new <clears throat> loadout that involved the Divine Avenger, Grand Faust, Funnel Flourish, Obsidian Carbine, Black Hat Cow, Fog Cup Coat, a Quick Strike, and Pentaheart as a recon. And I have just been slaughtering people. I noticed that. I was like, wait a second. We had about the same lockdown score when we were done playing. And then suddenly you have like 3,000 more points than I do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people just don't seem to see me coming until they're dead. Well, when you're swinging that fast, I'd say so, and yet dealing that much damage. I'm usually on the receiving end of that. <laughs> I stuck in that notion. Uh, I don't understand the ideal of dueling. I just My hands and my brain don't <clears throat> cooperate when it comes to Striker, swing. Striker, swing. I just blah 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 blah, blah and then I'm dead. Like, yeah. All the buttons. Same here. I just swing in circles with my Grand Foss trying to hit the guys as they come past. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Glacy says, try gamepad. I realized, like, this week watching a Blue Flood video that he uses a gamepad. I never okay. really thought. But there's some, fl there's some serious flaws with the gamepad. Because it's not optimized for the game. Yeah. Like your your one of your analog sticks still acts as a, uh, a as a mouse like as as the cursor, so you could be you know if you're not playing full screen you could be clicking on stuff off screen by accident. Um, I mean specifically I use a I use a, a program to run my gamepad on there, so it leaves something to be desired in the realm of accuracy. And well, I your experience in Glacies obviously differs because. That's never happened for him, and he plays exclusively with a gamepad, and he's disagreeing I, in the chat. I mean, uh, yeah, it, 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 could be, it could be different. I guess it depends on what you use. Like, um, Spiral Knights is supposed to have a integrated um, gamepad thing. They have an option to set up your gamepad options, but 
it doesn't work for me for whatever reason, so I have to use uh, this other program to run it. Hmm. Though I could only imagine if you're using a gamepad to play the game, there is no reason to not use full screen. I mean, the reason to not play full screen if you have a mouse is so that your hand doesn't go whizzing across your desk as you try to move your hand across the screen. I don't but with know, a gamepad, it just... doesn't really matter. You just point in a direction, and there it is. Yeah, I just... I. I don't know. It it as far as what I was saying, it, it works as a cursor as well. So there's, um, you know, it'd be a lot nicer if I could just point the analog stick in the one direction, and have my guy look in that direction. That's true. Like how Diablo console works. Like there's kind of like this little circle with like an arrow pointing underneath your character, and whichever way you point your analog stick, that's the way your guy's facing. And then you know, forward will move him forward in that direction. And that is what I ideally would want because it would I feel like it would just improve the accuracy so much. Hmm. Well, Zeddy says that that's how it works. Dragon says that's how it works. Glacy says that's how it works. I would assume that's how it works. Well, then right? I'm Where doing one, it wrong. One stick is for movement. The other stick is for turning your body. And then you can use bumpers or buttons to swing and or defend. Well, that's you how just it's going to gonna the, work you, it you to do said, anything that stuff up however you want bumpers and everything else how Maybe long ago did... how long ago did you try this gamepad stuff this was like a year ago i haven't played with it since because i didn't like the way the setup ran. ran i played with it for a while and then didn't end up liking it so maybe they fixed it in a patch i'd have to go through and see hmm. i don't know i actually don't even own a gamepad and i need to get one it's good you put so many games on the PC, just like it's a console. It just I know. It's much better. <clears throat> I'm waiting for the Steam controller before I actually pick one up. That's an interesting one, because then you don't really have oh, yeah. analog sticks. It's like touch pads. It's great when you have, have quick reflexes in your smaller limbs, as most gamers do. Yeah. Well, it's a very interesting controller. I I I, I might grab one if I, if I have the money. <laughs> Yeah, hardware. Yeah, the Arsenal yeah. derails. The Arsenal derails. No, this the is important. This is derails. Spiral Knights. We're talking about Spiral Knights. I wonder if they'll have Steam Controller Spiral Knights support, or if it'll just work like a console controller. Who knows? Well, yeah, like, does anybody really know how those, like, trackpads work on the Steam Controller? Pressure sensitive? Uh, I'm sure Valve does. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure it would work. I don't know. I don't know. Ed, we'll we'll have to see when when that's available. All righty then. We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. We good? Yeah. All right. Moving on. Over her at Warcraft. Man, I found the helmet of someone who likes some creature that prolongs their horn to fight with or something like that. The helmet is supposed to be resembling to a demon called. Guess we're talking about Spiral Knight's news, which is there isn't any. Still, the only thing that happened this week is Black Cads went away, so I hope you got your fill of pages and or books, and you can buy the boxes until Monday, so if you're still looking to get yourself this or that or the other Grand Faust symbol on your face, then go for it. Actually, the Grand Faust doesn't have that, but okay. It, oh, no, he's right. It's the Okay, a character. sealed sword charge on your face. Yeah, there you go. Faust. Just Faust. He's right. <laughs> this is why I am a host of a Spiral Knights podcast, guys. <laughs> Thumbs up. It's okay. You can't know everything. I can't? No. Oh, no, I might as well can't. not try. My hopes you and dreams have been have crushed. So much GG. And you're <laughs> Four out of five on Metacritic. Oh, once upon a time, oh, God, um, no there was supposed to be a gunner update. Remember how excited everyone was for that? Still excited for that. Yeah, but, like, that was announced so long ago. Oh, no. That was when they fixed the Chilling Duelist. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, but, like, how long ago? That was ago when was they it? fixed the Chilling Duelist. Yeah, it's oh, a couple uh, months ago. A few months ago now? There, there's a, there's a yeah. joke among the people that have been paying attention <laughs> to the game. Where they Gosh. had a bug fix a couple months ago where they fixed one gun which couldn't shoot. Um, it just oh. shooting it wouldn't do anything, and so now everyone says, "Hey, look, that was the gunner update. It was just one update, like to that one thing to fix the gun." And like gunner update done. So they patched the one gun. It can shoot now, you guys. Yep. 
Now, if we can find a sponsor who can give us, like, prizes and stuff, we'd be really happy to do another guess the release date contest kind of thing like we did last year for the Battle Sprites update. But... That would be cool. That would be cool if you guys could get, like, a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Have I've you had actually... people, guilds and stuff like that, they're like, yeah, I'll donate to that. Oh, okay, okay. But, yeah, I have some... 20,000 crowns and sub-100 energy has my entire life savings at the moment. Dude, Trinket's just talk to Echo slot. of Silence. They've got so much... Their coffers are just bursting with crowns. Yeah, that's it's honestly the one place this podcast has not ventured to go. Really? Like, some Echo of Silence members have rarely come to us, but Haddon, Mayabot, NJ Thug, uh, yeah. what's her name? Miso... Cobalt. We haven't had like we haven't talked to the, any of them for anything. Are they still relevant? They are. They're all still around. Okay. <clears throat> Mia is of one them. of my closer friends, so I could possibly talk to her about getting her in here. Grease the wheels, Sky Scythe. We need that money. We need that YouTube <laughs> money. <laughs> well, I could talk to her too. Uh anyways. Our main discussion this podcast. Sky, if you want to do that, that's fine. Or if you want to just direct her to me. I can talk to her too because we're pretty good friends also. Probably the only uh, friend I had in the pre Jumpire leaving Echo of Silence before everyone who was ever relevant moved to Echo of Silence. But anyways, mm. and that's not actually um, true because there are plenty of relevant people not in Echo of Silence. I'm just trying to cover that slip of the tongue. All right. Yes, I, we're being politically correct, everyone. Yeah. Well, I should just say I didn't mean to say that. There are people that are relevant that are not in Echo of Silence. Yes. Disclaimer. All, Lattison, Lattison every Lattison person that is still playing Spiral Knights today, you're all relevant. You're all beautiful little knights. <laughs> yes. Never forget. <laughs> Lad is a cray fish. <laughs> so, anyways, we are talking about feedback, so... If you're trying to help the people that are running this game to make a better game by letting them know of your experience, that's a good thing. That's what feedback is for. You want to help them find out what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what they could change, stuff like that. Obviously, you're not trying to make them feel like the scum of the earth because you didn't like what they did or what they didn't do. That's not helpful. The point of feedback is to be as helpful as possible, get the most stuff done, and ideally make everyone feel happy at the end of it. Though that sounds really like prosperous. I don't know what the word is. Happy endings? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily always have happy, happy endings. endings. But <laughs> the point is to make things fixed. And so you want to feed them back what they have given to you with information. So there are good ways to do this and bad ways to do this. And the Spiral Knights community is very good at practicing both, depending on who you're talking to and who you ask. Mm -hmm. Most forum goers... Mm, I can't say most some forum goers fall in the good. <laughs> the very good. I love those kinds of people. And then there's people that are really bad that make posts and threads that are I think the term the internet term is cancerous. You know them, we know them, we've all experienced them. The bad. You know the, bad. the trolls, the haters, the whiners, the cheesers. The well, criers, you have wine, yes. You have to have cheese. <laughs> you gotta have cheese with your ham. <laughs> and bread, but I don't know. Bread's not a term. You can be hammy, you can be cheesy, but you can't be bread. I don't know. Can you be bread? Never mind. So, do we want to read you the can list? Loaf around. Yeah, we will go through the list. We've got a list of good things that you can do and a list of bad things you can do. And what we kind of want to do is let's take an update. We were going to talk about this last week, so we were going to use the cat event. But what's an update we could use? You could use cats or battle sprites. What would you guys rather do? We're going to, like, Ooh. after each of these, we can provide an example of each. I would my... definitely say cats because battle but... sprites is so, was sort of a one-time thing that newer players aren't going to experience as older players did, whereas cats coming along for a new player will be the same as them coming along for an older one. We could even uh... do torta drones. We we can we can we can talk about cats or torture drones. I, I'm just saying, like, I don't have a lot of experience with either of the newer things because I've been kind of on a hiatus. And battle sprites are kind of my wheelhouse. So, you want to talk about cats or drones? That's fine too. You know what we can do? We can do any of them. All right. 
How about that? The world is our oyster. Okay. Cradle is our oyster. That's right. All right. So we can do a turn-taking thing on this. So, Sky, you want to start, and then Tovok, you can take the second one. I'll take the third one, and we can just go. And after each yeah, one, we yeah, can just kind of discuss it if it needs to be discussed, provide an example if we have it, um, and stuff like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Plan. All right. I choose you, Sky Scythe. Go. Tell them what you see. Get touchy-feely and tell them about your personal experience. Aw. Yet it's true. Examples? Because telling them exactly what they did will not help them, I think is the point of this. I was not the only person to compose this list. This was an effort of the hosts, so. No, that makes sense. Like, telling somebody, like, oh, I really like the Dracon because it can do a fireball attack. Thanks. Yeah, that's not going to be <laughs> as helpful as <laughs> I like the Dracon because it has a fireball attack that I can use to hit switches and bring two swords since I don't use weapon slots. That's a little bit more personal experience than I like a Dracon that can have a fireball. Yeah, and then it shows its versatility too so they know they're like, oh, like yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. It's good. They figured it out. <laughs> or even I don't like the Dracon because I don't like the final evolutions and what it looks like because I don't prefer beards. <laughs> and I have something about beards. They give me an allergic reaction. That's more personal. Like, I, I don't know. I like dragons. God, yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. Tell them what I you see. Get personal. Ghost dragon, guy. Sorry, what? Um, nothing. Uh, okay. So I'm reading the next one as well? No, I'm reading the next <laughs> one. We're good to go. Well, he, he said ghost guy. <laughs> so I, I thought you were trying to say something. Look, I'll handle this. <laughs> All right. Read the next thing. <laughs> you can go ahead, Tove. <laughs> Provide positive points along with your negative commentary. Not only is it nice... It also puts your complaints in context of the bigger picture. Pro provide that context for your points. But trying to think of an example for this. Um, the one that was put here is, you made an enjoyable boss fight in, unusual, in an unusual location. That would be the context. And the point would be, but it's so laggy, it's unplayable for me. I.e., I guess Margaret is what this is directed at. So... You they provide that context, which is that good part where, yeah, it's a good boss fight. It's kind of cool. You play in Moorcroft. You get to fight enemies in Moorcroft Manor, and that's kind of fun. We've not seen that before. But, and here's the part that I don't prefer about it, I can't experience it because my frames drop to, like, three frames per second while I'm playing it, and that's no good. Uh, okay. So. Or, like, it's too glitchy. Like, I've seen a lot of things where the cat uh, just flies off screen, and you can't hit it. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. I saw that screenshot. <laughs> yeah. That Tove that would be posted so on sad. AID. <laughs> Especially after you, like, farmed all those books. Uh, some Farm guy. multiple books. Poor guys. Poor guys. Does it yeah. only take one book to summon that thing? Yeah. But it's, like, a lot of pages. Uh, The pages are for something else. Do it in the chat if you want to look. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Anyways, yeah, so provide that context. I guess put the good with the bad makes it nice and put some context around it. I mean, some people, and I've seen this on the forums, in the feedback stuff and say, this is too laggy for me. Like what? Please pontificate a little bit. Tell me more. Uh, yeah, where they're just like really vague in general with their comments. Like, oh, uh, yeah, great. It's laggy. So like... <laughs> Are you, yeah. running, are you running dial-up? Because that might be the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so particularly if you have negative commentary, provide some context for it, please. All right, next one. Focus on observation rather than inference. Um, and what that means is talk about the things that are there, actually there, not the things that you, like, assume or expect. So an observation would be you made the spawn rates for the books very low, and it makes it really hard for a lot of people to get them, even though they would like to. And the inference is, you must hate players getting cool things. That's not part of the update, that's not what they did, that's not what they said. That is also, your assumption, and that's accusatory. not helpful or constructive in any situation. Yeah. 
It's like, oh, triple, three, <laughs> what is it, three rings? <laughs> I can't even three remember. Three rings, yes. Three, three rings must hate the community because they don't want us to have nice things. And it's yeah. like, no, just like, tell them how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, so the Don't be so emotional. The observation is there is now a Seraphinx and a Black Seraphinx. The inference would be Spiral Knights loves the Seraphinx more than the other battle sprites. That's Not it. that that's an actual piece of feedback. That's just me trying to think of other examples. I'd love a new modeled sprite. It would be nice. But there is a there okay. is a reskinned um, Seraphinx. Totally it's something. Want. It's definitely something. People like it. So, I, I mean, it's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sky, you want to take number four? Describe rather than judge. There's a thin gray line defining these. You made a highly CPU intensive boss fight in an unusual location is description. This is a bad boss fight is judgment. That seems pretty self explanatory. Mm hmm. Well, uh, uh, when you want me to go on? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Again, <laughs> when... I, I guess the point <clears throat> is you're trying to be helpful and let the developers of this game know what's going on rather than telling them that they're scum. Yeah. Or that their ideas are scum, or no one likes them anyways. Don't be emotional. Be, be, um... Get touchy-feely without being emotional. How do you like that? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Friends with benefits. (laughs) It needs to be analytical to a point, but you gotta get across how you're feeling. I I get it. Alright, go ahead. When applicable and reasonable give specific suggestions. Uh, For example, make it better is not a specific (laughs) suggestion. We've all seen a lot of that. (laughs) You need to fix the thing. What needs to be fixed about it? No, you just need to fix it. Make it better. (laughs) Yeah. Make spawn rates better. Make this update more. Make these things more accessible. Make it better is so freaking general. How are they supposed to appeal to you? They're not your best friend. They're not going to know what you like, you know, and they have to appeal to a wide audience. So the more input they can get, the better they can go in a direction that everybody will enjoy. Mm -hmm. And while we're on the point, it's also probably worth mentioning a lot of those, like, make it better, change this or that, make it... A lot of what I hear is make this more accessible. Like, lockdown is UVs to win which is like the version of pay-to-win, I guess, where people can roll until they get what they like. Um, a lot of that kind of stuff. I don't like trinkets and weapon slots because I can't afford them, stuff like that. You don't, don't forget that after the Battle Sprites update, the only way that Three Rings really makes money is with DLC purchases and energy purchases, and then promotions. That's yep. it. Um, there's no elevator passes or things like that where people can buy anymore. So it's, well, yeah. I guess it's bundles... Energy purchases and DLC, and that's it. So somehow, they have to drive some incentive for some people to buy some energy. So that's why trinket and weapon slots exist. So Mm -hmm. to kind of encourage people to either spend some crowns, which some people have no problem doing, or buy some energy. Why UVs and unbind costs are so high? Because they kind of want you, in a backhanded, supportive sort of way, to support them by buying some energy. That's why there's so many promotions, because... Then they make money, and so. and ultimately, it's an MMO. That's how MMOs are built. People who have more money, who are willing to shell out more uh, more cash, especially in a free to play model, uh, they're going to have the edge. They yep. have more options. So, and I really don't think Spiral Knights is pay to win. Not not at this point. N- no, and the UVs are enough to kind of give you an edge in lockdown, but if you're skilled enough, I think you can manage. Exactly. I mean, you see these people that go around in, like, proto, and, I mean, I've seen guys. Well, I'll tell you about one recently. It was earlier this week. I just jumped in the lockdown game. It was an Ashtail guy, and he had, like, a Barbara's Thornblade and a Grand Faust. Same as, like, most people that will visit lockdown. You can expect most people to own those kinds of swords. And his UVs on him were, like, slime low and undead low. Um, <laughs> though not in that order. I think it was flipped. <laughs> Because Slime Low on a Barber Stormblade and Undead Low on a Grand Foss would be pretty sad. And this guy just had Ashtail, the four-star Wolver armor. And he was obliterating everyone. I could not get a shot in on him. He had no UVs, no nothing. And he was just playing skilled. This game's not necessarily play-to-win, and you do see a lot of that, too. 
um, yeah. which is not as specific a suggestion. Fix the play to win. Oh yeah, how? God. Please. Uh, people, people just like to have an excuse, and you know, Three Rings gives them an excuse, but Three Rings also likes money. So. Mm-hmm. That yeah. said, don't also forget that your audience is Three Rings, which is a small game studio. So yeah. things like give us a big like expansion update or why is the guilt the gutter update taking so long? If you've been on the test server, you might know why. Um, it's a small game studio with not many coders I think that have, like, don't get paid a whole lot. Yeah, um, because not everyone buys energy, and so they kind of just do what they can, and that's why things take time. Mm-hmm. And you got to remember that. They can't fix hey. everything all at once. They're not Blizzard. They're not Riot. We should, be, we, we, should, we should be happy that they, you know, just... They update regularly enough. Like, that that's that's more than we can actually ask. Because, like, with the procedurally generated, you know, clockworks, the mm-hmm. game is, you know, technically, air quotes here, infinite. Yes. You, every, every dungeon runs different in some small manner. So, you know, they do offer a lot. We just... People just get... And sure, this is the wrong way to use this word, but jaded. People get jaded. Uh, and then I, I, I agree with that, yeah. Things get stagnant to them, so then they're like, oh, when, when are we going to get new things? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. I mean, it was a joke where Aphrodite, during the April Fool's secret GM forum thing, where they had, like, this joke game, uh, game master forum up, and Aphrodite said, like, once the players start giving us money, then we'll keep making the updates was a joke, but at the same time, there's some small amount of truth in that. Yeah. Somewhere hidden in there, where they'll still make, keep making content until they can't support themselves, but at the same time, they're a small game studio, and they do what they can, so... Yeah. Keep that in mind as you ask for, like, the biggest things in the world. Anyways. Is the is the Sparklight's team, like, a subset of Three Rings? Because they, like, run Puzzle Pirates, too, right? Yeah, they've got a few games under their belt all but it's a different the... team that works on puzzle pirates i think so i don't think any of them overlap okay because i was thinking like four guys and they're running like two three games <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> nah. nope it's some three or four dozen i think total on their website that's all of three rings yeah the company but it's crazy anyways sky yeah. if you've got a problem try to identify the root of the problem more than the effects of said problem so I guess that would have something to do with... I don't know, we've been using the Margot boss fight. Um, there's too many particles flying across my screen, which is, I guess, more specific than it's laggy. Yeah, because the effect is, like, this is what's happening to me. I try to figure out why. Mm-hmm. The root is there is a broken button that is letting people buy thousands of prismatic bolted Vs. The effects are, I have prismatic bolted Vs on, my friends have prismatic bolted Vs on all their things. I don't know. It's yeah. where you're trying to get to the point so that you make it easier for them to fix. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times, you'll see stuff and people will make a comment, and I wish I had one off the top of my head, but you kind of wonder if the game masters actually do see this, or the coders, or whoever, like, how do they, they need to actually go back and talk to you and say, wait, no, tell us more. You haven't given us us enough information here we don't actually understand the problem completely where this is happening or that is happening where if your feedback is you wish that the food cost for sprites was cheaper but the effect i don't know (laughs) oh no yeah and people are saying no that's just called a bug report i'm talking about yeah problems like personal problems like i don't like how the sprite food is so expensive because I can't find enough minerals. Like, that would be a yeah. root. The effects are, I'm spending way too many crowns buying these Sprite foods off of the auction house, and I don't think that's fair. And both are yeah. valid points to make, but be sure you include that root of the problem in there as best you know how. My it's just one is... of those efficiency things. I guess that's why it's also at the bottom of this list, why I put it at the bottom. It has the least to be said Yeah. about. Anyways. <laughs> my Sprite is breaking my bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess that would be an effect. Yeah, it would be an effect. It wouldn't be a <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to talk about the bad. Yeah. Is it my turn? Way. Go ahead. If you can't think of a constructive reason to give feedback, don't give it at all. 
Three Rings hates players. I have seen a thread that that's what it, all it was. It was let's compose a list of reasons why Three Rings is bad and why they don't like us. Oh my god! And they had radiance and spread costs and uh, UVs and this and that and the I other. No new content. Boiling. That's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Three Rings. <laughs> Apologize on behalf of the community. That's right. It's kind of stinky. Thanks for this great free game. Now here's everything you're doing wrong and why I hate you. You're an evil corporiz- corpor- cor- corporation and you want all my money. Yep. Boo. Um, right on the coattails of that, I guess. Never use feedback to vent. If you need to vent and let off steam and be really angry, like go take it out on some Skulver clones or some slimes or something. <laughs> <laughs> or take a walk. Physically, not verbally. Yes. Yeah, don't take a verbal walk. Yeah, and don't take a verbal <laughs> ramp on Skulver clones either. That's not cool. Actually, probably stay out of lockdown if you're mad. It's not a good place to go. Eh, Skulver works. <laughs> Maybe go to the Jelly Palace on Normal and Grand Foss some fools. <laughs> yeah. That's or fun times. <laughs> go up and walk around or do something. But seriously, some people just get mad about things. I... I'd have to look it up. I saw one rant on the Facebook page when the first cats, the very first cat came out, cat event, and uh, we discussed that comment, but it was this guy, and he was just going off on, like, stupid three rings and their drop rates and random this, and how he couldn't get the stuff that he wanted, and it was embarrassing and sad and kind of scary that people are capable of getting that emotional about, like, pixels on a screen. Yeah. All at once, and you know, don't don't vent via feedback. <clears throat> Recognize and acknowledge the limits of your, er, yes, the limits of your knowledge and expertise. I.e., the drop weights have been lowered. The drop weights have been lowered. No, they haven't. Yeah, yeah. Some people this update saying that oh they they reduced the the drop rates on the books. They reduced the drop rates on the pages, and there was a bunch of people going off about this on this most mm-hmm. recent cat event. Mm-hmm. They didn't ruin the. Uh, they didn't lower the drop rates. They were the same. Yeah, people confirmed know it all. by three rings. They were the same. Yeah. <laughs> so your knowledge and expertise may not extend to what you think it does, and don't forget that if you're giving feedback, you're talking to the people that are making the game. And if you're gonna make an assumption and pretend like you know what you're talking about, you better know what you're talking about, because you're talking to the people that do know what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't. Don't. Don't make up anything. <laughs> Don't, like that. <laughs> the drop rates! Ah! Turns into a witch hunt. Yep. Um, you don't... can ask! Questions are good. Alright, sorry, go ahead. No, um, don't generalize, exaggerate, or be rude. That piece of expletive makes me puke every time I look at it. <laughs> that is a generally... That's a well-written thing. I think this, was, this wasn't mine. Someone else wrote this. I think maybe the internet wrote this, but a generalized, exaggerated, rude statement, that piece of expletive makes me puke every time I look at it. Um, You do, as we said, be specific. Don't blow things out of proportion because it doesn't help. And don't be rude because that's not nice and it still doesn't help. Yeah. Like, uh, with that example, specifically, if you don't like a piece of armor... And you're like, I'll never wear this armor because of this reason. Just, just, just keep it to yourself. Because one of the devs like spent like a l- or you know spent like a long time making that. <laughs> now I guess if there's a good reason for it, like I will never use the cold iron vanquisher because it's not really applicable anymore. I wish it had more use because brandishes out damage the cold iron vanquisher now. For instance, God. I could maybe the Cold Iron Vanquisher could kill zombies within Grim Totems, within those respawning totems, as Glacies suggested, and I kind of really like that idea. But the and Vanquisher looks so cool. It looks really good. <laughs> I really like the mechanics of it. I like the charge attack. I mean, it's a good functioning sword. It just doesn't have enough power to compare. I wish it could get balanced or buffed in some way. Yeah, That's good specific. It's not exaggerating. Like, this sword is, I don't know exaggerating it's not being rude you're not generalizing things it's good sword specific. looks good but is bad <laughs> needs needs, uh, needs, needs help yeah or else i will quit the game 
<laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> if if Three Rings doesn't do something about this within a few moments, I'm going to just... I'm, I boycott this franchise. It's ridiculous that they don't cater to my every whim. Exactly. There you go. Yep. Um, you don't want to indicate that there is and will only ever be one solution, which is usually your solution. You don't want to show act like your solution or someone else's solution or any given solution is and will only ever be the one solution, i.e. the one person that goes around yelling, not Glacies, he didn't do this, I'm not saying that, but Cold Iron Vanquisher must have this. I mean, there's a not really an or else there, but I mean, that's the expected finish to that, but where this idea, my idea, is the only idea that will ever work to fix this problem. I think I saw a lot of that stuff when Radiance were around, or not around, where it's like, you could fix the game by re-including Radiance into the clockworks at the same rate as all of the other fire crystals. And Three Rings was hesitant to do that because that uh, makes people be able to finish the game faster. And they don't want that. They want you to like spend money and buy energy and buy fire crystals and do things like that. And so they implemented their own solution, which was not any of y'all's solution, forum goers. And, yeah. I guess back to, you don't know everything. No one knows everything. Not even me. But that's already been proven. <laughs> Alright, and the last one, which I feel like has to apply to uh, this discussion also. Sky? Stop talking. Once you've made your point, wait and allow your listeners to respond. Yeah, stop talking. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not to... Yeah. It... You said stop. Good point. Let's just yeah. sit and have a moment of silence to demonstrate this point. Okay, fun chat. Yeah, <laughs> it, has, it has something to do with... And this, I guess this has to do as a collective group, too, now that I think about it. When there's one person saying, hey, we don't like this, um, there only needs to be one thread on the forums where people saying don't like this. Like, radiant fire crystals need to be back in the clockworks. Okay. They got it. Let them yeah. work on it. Let oh, yeah, because everybody got really mad with the with the patch because it took away, like, the bullets and it became, like, weird shatter explosives that are, aren't nearly as effective. Yeah. Yeah. And so... It was like, <clears throat> you can be a bomber and still use precision, which is pretty cool. And then, and then they were like, nah, no, nah, you can't. I don't know. I, I like, I kind of, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of the... like the change. I, I, aesthetically, I get that, like, stats wise, damage wise, it wasn't great, but I wasn't really a bomber to begin with, so. But once the point has been made, I guess the point is that the point has been made. So. Yeah. Stop talking. <laughs> My bad. Let's Shut go. Shut up. It's not you. <laughs> Anyways, sprint question. This is what we do when we finish our normal discussion to keep you engaged in the show. I don't know. We like these questions. It's just 60 seconds or less to answer the question. Uh, you can use as short as one word or up to 60 seconds to speak. Our question, and we'll, we can just each go through this and give our own opinion. Uh, it's just fun little questions of different calibers and variants and other words that have to do with Spiral Knights. Our sprint question this week is... Spiral Knights' most unique element is... The trees. The trees. Um, oh, crap. The, the... The, the, the gecko robots. What are they called? <laughs> Scuttlebots. <laughs> Dude, I love Scuttlebots. Gecko scuttlebots. robots? Hmm. Gecko robots. That's what they are. That's what Scuttlebots are. <laughs> I'm going to have to say, for me, it might have been... I definitely like the trees. Definitely like Scuttlebots. I'm going with Apocrya as far as the uh, actual Apocryan levels go. Because there is... I've never seen a hack and slash with that kind of mood and atmosphere before, ever. It was really cool. The whole the whole setup for it, too. Like, it, the level was just a big open level mm -hmm. with, like, that guy. The it, first... Uh, and the yeah. first time you get to the Nexus, it's just... Amazing. The first yeah. time we got to the Nexus, first time we got into the, the plat the what is it, the something plateau? Anyways. Uh, yeah. Grasping plateau. Grasping, thank you. 
grasping plateau. It was just like, what is the? Am I still playing Spiral Knights? <laughs> yeah. It was. I would have liked an Apocrya Light. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. So yeah. I'm going with that one. Anyways, good deal. Let's jump into transmutations. If you gents are <clears throat> good. Anything else on feedback? Um, uh, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Don't give people microphone feedback. And um, mm-hmm. uh, your Feed mama your told mouth, you that if back. you have nothing nice to say, say That's anything at all. And say. this applies especially so for feedback. So shut the <laughs> fire truck up. There you go. Expedition. <laughs> go. go forth and give helpful feedback when the gunner update comes or if you're beta testing for it quote unquote beta testing if you're test servering for it go and give good feedback no spoilers yeah. transmutations Well, we only have one idea for transmutations this week, which is talking about things we would like to see added to the game. This comes from Heroia. And would one of you care to read it? Or I can? Oh, I, I can read it! I can read it! Go, dude. He- Heroia <laughs> says, Uber Mecha Death Machines. This is what he, she, it would like he. to be added to the game. Well, this idea is just awesome. Why not have a rare drop chances of on par to recon scout missile drop thing mecha knight that acts like a super upgrade to the basic spiral knight suit similar in build to a beefy mecha knight and you sit on the top it would have a short range special weapon comparable to the torta drone short range swing this upgrade would last for only one to two minutes and could be extended with defense orb drops so it's a beef knight yeah it's like something that you activate and then you like sit on top of it and it's a titan. It's yeah, a like titan have you ever played uh, Castle Crashers? I've not. I probably should. Uh Castle Crashers. You had this like <clears throat> sandwich you would eat and your knight would just like beef up. It just become oh, so yes. swole. And that's what I'm <laughs> nice. imagining. Yeah, and then you and get the Torta Drone Punch power something. and walk around and destroy things for a couple minutes. That'd be pretty cool. I feel like it'd be fun. Yeah. I don't know if it would be in place in, like, if it would feel at home in Spiral Knights, but... Uh, I I gotta say that, first of all, the lag spike that people would get from this thing spawning in, good god. (laughs) Yeah. Secondly, we kind of already have this. I mean, if you have the fire barrier from the Dracon and any manner of barrier, as in a drop, and doing the Tortadrone shield bash, that's probably better. Bye. Yeah, but you need all these things if if you didn't have those, and then you got the Mecha Knight, the Uber Death of Mecha Knight, like, then you would, then 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 you would need those things. <laughs> you, you would have an so Uber Mecha Death that. Machine. I mean, yeah. what's better with than that? Stand tall for Turtle Fall is what this sounds like. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> turtle Fall. Stand by for Turtle Fall. <laughs> Stand tall for Turtle Fall. Thank you, Jerma. Jerma, That's... 985, ladies and gentlemen. Um, wait, 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 wait. Can I propose an idea for transmutations? Yes, go. Um, so this is just something because we got an ask, and I'm sure the idea has been put forward before or whatever, but we got an ask on Adventures is Delicious. I didn't check to see if anybody else did after I answered it. Um, but the ask was, like, any two weapons of the same class, you know, swords with swords, guns with guns, bombs with bombs. If you could mix the two, which two would you mix? And it kind of gave me the idea of if, I mean, this would be seriously game-breaking. It would probably never happen, but it's a fun idea. Um, what if you had a forge where you could mix the weapons and, you know, keep half the stats from both and kind of, you know, forge your own weapon? Uh, what this sounds like to me is Fang of Og and Wild Hunting Blade. <laughs> yeah, like... It would obviously have the need to have some kind of balance thing where, like, it would power it down so it wasn't mad up, but, like, it would be cool to use just because you could do those kind of combinations. Yeah. I would mix my Shiver Mist Buster and Ash of Agony. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> all the status effect. <laughs> I Fire said, uh, and freeze. Of, Let's do it. I said Ash of Agni and the Graviton Bomb, so you would be pulling them into the... Uh, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Hmm. Cool Blitz of Needle Silvers, or a Blitz Needle Argent Peacemaker? Could we do this with shields as well? Because I would Shoot, love to have, yeah. like, one Tortifist on each uh, <laughs> arm just ramming into enemies. <laughs> that'd be fun. And then, like, volcanic plate on my back. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, just... I don't know. Just think about it. Sounds cool. Cool. Well, yep. weapon, weapon combos, that sounds like another fun thing. Yeah. Alrighty. It sounds like it would require absolutely just dedication from three rings for five years to get this done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's never going to happen, but, like, a, a boy can dream. <laughs> Man can dream. Man can dream. Also, Transmutation Spiral Knights card game. Where's my card game, people? We need to get back on that. Oh, we worked on yeah, that I was doing a thing for that. Yeah. Card games are so hard, though, because... Balance. Depending on how complex you want it to be, there's there's so many so many things you can put into it. And the balance like, is uh, unbalanced. A lot of it just ends up being a Hearthstone clone. <laughs> Hearthstone kind of does it right, so... Or Hearthstone is a clone of other things. Magic. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. Spiral Order Recon. I got it! Well, welcome to uh, Spiral Knights Related Media, and got two videos and two pictures for you this week. So, the first one, Voxter returns to YouTube, him and his 1,000 subscribers. Wow. Almost 2,000 now, but he just does lockdown montages nowadays, it would seem, and he put out another one called Lockdown Montage Colossus. So if you want to see someone with all of the frames and none of the lag doing the kill stuffs, on every person, then, uh, that was a good sentence, by the way. You can quote me on that one. It was. Then go check that out. All of the links, uh, that we discuss here, and I think these are all the links in the entire show notes. It'll be a short show notes this week. But that's on our website, sclayelite.com slash arsenal. You can check out all the other episodes of the podcast as well. <laughs> Next one is Damon 180s, also known as Blue Floods, his Spiral Knights Lockdown Lattice and Sclays Challenge. He took up the idea of doing lockdown challenges, and so he has done Dutch Oven, who changed his name to Dutch McLovin, so that's him. He's done his challenge, done Red O'Deliz's challenge, has done one just very recently, whose night begins with an A and I cannot remember. He did a challenge that I offered, which was kill a knight using the rocket pup on Avenue. So, the snowy map that has a rocket pup at the top. Kill a knight. No spoilers, but someone dies by rocket pup in our game. Um, that's Sky Scythe and I play, so you'll have to check that out. Because I was like, you know what? We're playing Avenue. Let's do this challenge. So. There's a map with a rocket pup on it? Yeah. Is that new? Uh, it's about a year and two months or so old. Ah, oh, slay me! I think we may have to... Hold on the uh, on the castle crashers until we can run some <laughs> lockdown or something. I don't know. We'll have to see. Anyways, yeah, whatever works. We have Yarochisa's gun puppy statue and snipes, which is a sculpting. Actually, this isn't even art. Um, but no, this... sculpting is art. Oh yeah, it is. I was thinking paper art, but my mind and my mouth are not coordinated today. That's cool, man. Anyways, this thing is about three and a half inches tall, uh, two to four inches wide, and I don't know where the uh, what the materials are for this. I cannot find them here. It They're not listed. Like clay, doesn't it? Yeah, it it's marked as sculpture, so I assume it's a clay of some kind. But it's really it's nice. A you got a made of sculpture. Mm-hmm. Snipes and a uh, gun puppy statue. Fun stuff. I guess that's the name of the title, so you know what to expect. We we like things that are hard and in our hands, 
and that sounds so bad, but the actual Especially Spiral Knights things, things that are three inches by two inches. <laughs> You didn't have to go there. Especially things that we can tell people what we see, and we can get touchy-feely with them and tell them about our personal experiences. Oh my goodness. This went south. Anyways, oh. actual merchandise that you can hold, like the rocket snipe that is... Not rocket snipe, the snipe mobile that is over on the desk over yonder beyond my monitor. I want to see the snipe mobile. Let me go... Grab the snipe mobile. You guys talk about this platinum snipe steam badge. Tovar, can you explain how steam badges work in short amounts of time? To some degree, yes, I can. I got this. You buy money, you get the cards, you craft the badge done. Pretty much. You can play the game. Uh, you can play the game and get like three cards, and then you're supposed to like go and uh, trade the cards. Like, I, I guess you can. Can you use the trade system to actually trade cards? Yes. Okay. You play games, you get cards, you trade cards around, you can buy cards on the Steam market. And I'm totally stealing your thunder, but I'm back. No, it's okay, I'm looking at the... Oh my god. Look at that. You Did you make that? No, this was a, a little toy that we found. It's not actually Spiral Knights in any way, shape, or form, it but it just bears a shocking resemblance to a snipe riding a, like, Volkswagen something. Gosh, you could totally... You could totally it's like a like, wind-up toy. Like, it winds up and rolls across the floor. That's awesome. It's got a knob. Yeah. Fun. I like that. Good find. Fe uh, speaking about... What am I trying to say here? While we're on the subject of hard things that you can hold in your hands... Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we're still Talk waiting on the uh, print, on the signed print. That's not gotten to me yet um, for the Good Day for Night contest. We will show that on the podcast when we get it, so... One of these days. Anyways, so the thing with Steam cards is the more cards you need to complete a badge, obviously the harder it is to complete that badge. Once you get all the cards in a set, you can craft them and make like a badge, which says, hey, I got all the cards for this. All That's all it does. It upgrades your Steam profile. You get emotes and stuff like that on Steam. Um, and so there's normal cards, and there's foil cards. Gold cards, foil cards, whatever you want to call them. They're like the rare versions, and they're always more expensive. And so Spiral Knights cards are hard to find as it is. They're pretty. is. They're on the more expensive side of Steam cards. Not and then there's the foil cards, Knights. which will go from anywhere from 50, uh, 50 cents to $50 on Steam, depending on who you ask, for these rare Steam cards. And this one guy whose name, night name is not given, goes ahead and makes the Platinum Snipe Badge, which is the foil version of the uh, Spiral Knights badge. All, yep. how many cards is it? 11? 13? 1% I... chance of getting a foil card from any card gained, Glacies says. Oh, God. So. But you get a Platinum that's... Snipe. And, like, yeah. that's a lot of XP for your arbitrary Steam level. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I've seen people with Steam levels exceeding 200. I saw someone with 300. What do you do with that, though? Nothing. Uh, Gabe Newell will personally sit on your keyboard. <laughs> he better. I better get something. Yeah, I saw 318 yesterday, I think. Just derping around on Steam. Highest person on my list is Magnus with 39. Magnus? Oh, okay. Magnus of the same Spiral Knights fame. Mm-hmm. As in, like, Magnum Frost Magnus? Magnus no. Mega evolves Mag into uh, Mega Magnus. Anyways. Magnus Magnus. Alrighty. Soul Ether is number three on mine. Maroka is number five. Wow. I Look think at you're number three on mine. The collecting. Yeah. What am I, 22? I sell, I sell all my cards to buy stuff for Dota. <laughs> nice. Seriously? That's what I figure you should do. Sell the cards, make money, and then just use the money to buy games. I mean, that's the only thing that's valuable. No, but like, At the end of the day, you your know, Steam buying... profile doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's pretty much what I use them for. Like, I buy them, I use them for stuff in games because there's a lot of like cheap items. Like, Guns of Icarus has a lot of like 50 cent things, and Dota has a bunch of things in the marketplace that are like. I bought, I bought the uh, Spiral Knights armor, like the Iron Wolfer set, with some of that. Nice. Yeah. Good deal. Well, the last one, I guess... Sky, did you put this in here? Who put this in here? 
I put it in there. Another one of Blue Flood's videos? Aye, aye. Oh, Thank this went out today. Adventure in random lockdown. Yes, and it's one of the perspectives of um, <clears throat> you and I doing the uh, d- the dream. Oh, in which it he is. compliments my sniping. Oh, good deal. Well, I'll have to check yeah. that out then. Yeah. Spoiler well, alert. Spoiler alert: Things happen in Blue Flood's episode that will happen in our video, which is coming out later today. All right. Whoa, whoa. What did I say about spoilers? Uh, <laughs> I guess it was an old word. Video spoilers. Thing that people get shot, stuff happens, people die. That's what normally happens in lockdown, though, so it's not really a spoiler. Drama. Yep. Anyways, we're pushed for time, so we're going to push uh, Bazaar Banter off again another week. Torta Drone Shields, you'll have to wait. Sorry, so sorry. My, my fault, really. No, it's not your fault. It's no one's <laughs> fault. It means it's a good show, is what it means. We actually discuss the, the shields. I love these things. We will be sure to have you around when we talk about them, then. Spoiler, Ladison dies in episode 90. <gasps> no! He's my favorite! Lat and Zang are my OTP. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell Hood you said that. No, don't tell Hood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess we should probably finish this up then um, with unique variants. Ladies and gentlemen, your unique variants. Okay, listener contributions and finishing out the show and stuff like that. We got a question from Heroia this week. And he just asks, what's your favorite flavor of pie? I guess lemon meringue! Ask... What? Lemon meringue pie. Oh. <laughs> cool. I thought you said not mine. Like, no. somebody had come into the room with a baby and you just screamed. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite flavor of pie. Apple. Sorry, I have to be conventional, but it's true. There is a... It's not racially anything, don't get the wrong idea, but it's called a Swedish apple pie. It's just a special style of making the pie. I don't honestly know what makes it super special, but, uh... He's yes. from Sweden. Yes. Pie flavor. Sky side. Apple. Gotta go with apple. Classic. Classic. Good deal. Shepherd's pie is good. Now, I do have a question for you guys. What's the difference... Quickly. What's the difference between pie and cake? I don't... I, like, I don't oh, have an answer. Are you asking me or are you asking the audience? Uh, you. Pie, I would say, is basically a crust in which you can contain things, whereas a cake is sort of a fluffy... Uh, it, yeah, it's, like... It's like if somebody had baked the separate parts of the bread in the crust and the fluff inside as two separate things. That's what pie and cake are. I thought pie was served in a dish and cake was served on a plate, and I thought that was, like, the one difference. Because my usual question to follow that up is, then what's the difference between key lime pie pie, and cheese cake? But I think you guys' definition actually separates those pretty good, so never mind. Boom! Good job, Skyside. High-five me. (laughs) Also because they're going on... Don't high five his face, man. Gee. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Anyways, because they're going on about like the number pi, like the irrational number pi in the uh, chat. Just note, as everyone does, that in leet three one four backwards is pie. So, oh, when you turn three one four around like in a mirror, it says pi. Yeah, yeah. In leet. leet All right, cool. Speaking of feedback, I got a mail this week and. Sky, are you? Do you want to read this or Toad? Do you want to read this? Uh, I want to read this. Go okay, ahead. Go for it. We're not giving away the name of this night, but sent me this wonderful piece of uh, request and feedback. Okay. Yeah, so, so go Alucard ahead. Legolas asks, "Hey, oh no, you don't know me, but I'm a big fan of Ur videos on YouTube, and the April Fools thing didn't work for me. I was wondering if you could send me some stuff. I just need a little." <laughs> With few orbs and webs and a little CR, if you could tie. Tie. <laughs> T Y. Yeah. T-Y. Good job. That's another thing. If you're giving feedback, learn to spell. All right, that's... and that's not feedback. That's asking for a handout. Everybody who you know, 
Everybody in the chat, don't ask for handouts. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of your videos on YouTube. The April Fool's thing didn't work for me. That's feedback. Anyways. Yeah, but it's so... It's just... It's just killed by the fact that he's like, can you give me things right after that? Like, come on. A few orbs and weapons and a, a little crowns, if oh, could. Oh, guys. He's just looking for a little hope. Yeah, he's looking for a little <laughs> hope H-L-P-E is how it's spelled. Hulpy. But in case um, said person listens to this, you know what? We're not making fun of you. You are a great person, as Tovok said earlier. You rock. But no. It was an April Fool's joke, which means no, I don't actually have anything. And if even if I did, they get picked up bound, so sorry. Uh, try begging in Haven 1. I hear people <clears throat> like that. They love it. Like, send tells and trade requests to everyone you can. Based upon your spelling, I'm going to assume that you don't know what sarcasm is, so that was sarcasm. Yeah, don't do that. Um, You guys have seen Noctis EXE in lockdown, I'm sure, right? Or Sky? Yes. Yes, I have seen him. And he's in the guild is offline? Okay. Like, how much coordination does a guy have to do to get Noctis.exe in the guild is offline? Nah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, what? I haven't, I'm, I'm, what? Hmm? Like, the next yes. thing is I need your internet, like the name of a knight, and then join the is offline guild. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this guy's Noctis EXE is offline. So, uh, cool. I just saw that. I want to give that guy a shout out. Um, also, shout out to Tove for, like, coming to the stream today. And I'm like, dude, get on the show. Come podcast with us. And he was just like, sure, I'm game. I was halfway hoping it would happen, to be honest. Halfway. Well, hoping. as I say, you are a friend of the podcast, so you're welcome anytime. Hey, well, thanks. Um, I'll, just... I'll, I'll try to make more of an appearance <laughs> i'll try to be less <laughs> whatever scarce. you would like to do is fine um tovok will be joining us if i didn't say that already um yes i did he'll be joining us for spiral lights which is a charity event to support charity water um the main event will be friday to saturday june 6th to 7th 2014 this is the obligation oblig obligatory promotion of this event that the podcast is hosting so if you want to see all the details go to our website um you can go to sclaley.com slash arsenal slash spiral lights or it's actually on our homepage too so you can just go to yep. the website and it's there really good really really good simple design for that website i like it i approve well thank you it's yep. actually not completely of my own design but i cheated it a little works. bit i help out with the typos yeah <laughs> he always sky always comes through and makes sure that things are spelled correctly no so during that event as well i'll make sure that i'm uh fully in character i'll wear my uh my iconic, you know, cosplay costume set, my, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I'm wearing on the banner of AID. I'll make sure All right. you wear it. Good deal. Yeah. I'm lost. Um, we'll be That's doing some Clockers Copycats. We will be doing some shopping lists. We could be doing some Coliseum Rumbles, which is we're just going to get a bunch of people in guild <laughs> teams and go play Blast and Lockdown and just, like, run silly loadouts and do all sorts of crazy stuff. It'll be uh, awesome. You'll have some nights, all three podcast hosts. Um, I think Baroka is still interested in coming, though. In his last video on YouTube, he sounded like I wasn't. I didn't ask to be part of this. What am I doing here? Oh. <laughs> so Jinx, I think, is going to be doing it, though. I still yeah. need to talk to him. Ruby uh, Eclipse of Empire is going to be there. Glacies, the Spiral Scientist, is going to be there. Blue Flood uh, is probably going to be there. Tovox is going to be there. And if you come, I'll let you touch my butt. Oh gosh! How can it have any meat if you don't eat your pudding? <laughs> so if you want to attend the event starts at 2pm which is when the podcast starts if you know when the podcast starts Sundays then you will know when this starts June 6th and 7th Friday and Saturday um, if you want to get involved you can like tell people about the event uh, put it in your guild chat do all stuff like that and then donate because that's the point you can go we'll have the donate link um, it's right there in big text wherever you go wherever we're promoting this event and you can Get win prismatic bomb heads, which is Lord Hood's all-time favorite, and he will never stop uh, telling you how. Quick correction: prime bomb head. Prime bomb head. The prime bomb head. I kicked it off. I have given thirty dollars to the charity. Um, anybody that can match mine, I'll give another dollar. <laughs> oh, and just a quick note, listeners: 
those people who beg for a shopping list, who did not donate any money, will get shopping list with stipulations arranged by you. Yeah. Um, so he will be. I think we're gonna we're gonna modify the this format a little bit so that we can run a uh, shopping list independently, no moderators required. But uh, Sky Scythe will actually be playing for once, so you can have him run against you or with you. We'll have multiple teams going. It should be a lot of fun. You can donate, get heart crests, you can get monster pockets, you can get into the, any of the games that we're playing. Should be Another a lot of fun. So. Correction. Crests of love. Crests of love. Yes. Well, thank you. All right, and there it is. Um, Tovok donated thirty-one dollars. Good deal. Thirty dollars. So- there was already a dollar on there. I don't know who did that. Oh. Whoops. But yeah, anybody who can match the donation for thirty dollars, I'll give another do- dollar to the donation. All right. Um, we can't necessarily. I mean, we'll try, but we can't necessarily promise to get everyone who donates before the event starts, like announced on the stream and stuff. But. I mean, we'll get you, Tovok. You'll be around and stuff. Oh, cool deal. Yeah. Anyways, um, so that's that. I guess that's the end of episode 79. Anything, anyone you guys want to shout out to? Uh, uh shout outs to my friends, Mira, Stephanie, and Adam. Yeah. Hi, I guys. I don't. Shout out to Shen for still being a civil person and a part of the blog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the other thing is, I get back on, but I don't have, like, admin access, so I can't, like, edit asks or anything. I actually have to tell you guys to put what oh. I want to say on it. It's like, that's inconvenient. I can give you admin stuff right now. All right. Cool. <laughs> you can email us if you want to tell us stuff at arsenal at scalaily.com. Lots of people do it that way. That's so mainstream. If you want to be unique, you can call us at 1678-322-7765. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash and uh, check out all the episodes of the Arsenal podcast at scalaily.com slash arsenal. There Seriously, may though. be an incoming Twitch stream this week, guys. Just as a heads up, I need to... Uh, Maximus Efficiency will be returning this week. Most likely, unless something grievous happens. So we'll get back on the free-to-play. Should be fun. All right, well, thanks, Tove. Thanks, Sky. No problem. Yet Not a fun problem. Show. It was fun today. And with that, I guess we will say go forth and give feedback correctly as you ride into the sunset on your Uber Mecha death machine. Peace out, everyone. See you later. Bye! Geared up and ready to go? Thanks for listening to the Arsenal, a Spiral Knights podcast. See links and listen to previous episodes on our website, scalaily.com slash arsenal. Send comments, questions, and audio to arsenal at scalaily.com or give us a call at 1-678-322-7765.